Welcome to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. I would like to encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list, everyone in my social groups, and all of my listeners worldwide, please do me a favor. Hit that like button and share this video podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's free. Help make this video podcast go viral by posting it to your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your X page, formerly known as Twitter, your TikTok page, and or on your LinkedIn page. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. We have upgraded our platform by moving from an audio podcast to a video podcast using StreamYard. We want to interact with our audience in real time through the chat rooms during our live podcast. The episode to Genocide in American Ghettos podcast is our interactive black grassroots media component. We discuss controversial topics that you don't hear about from the mainstream media. We're committed to reporting truthful and accurate news. We believe that now is the time for a comprehensive and new strategy and a new movement for black people slash African people. For those of you who don't know who, who I am, then get to know me. Make arrangements with me to come on the show and get on camera. I am the founder and president of GERCAM, the grassroots community activist movement. I encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list, that would be 2,016 people, to come on my platform. I use my platform to give black artists, African artists, black entrepreneurs, African entrepreneurs, on my friends list and in my social groups an opportunity to promote their products and services to my listeners from the global community. I also give people in the faith community an opportunity to promote their ministries and to share a 30-minute sermon with my listeners from the global community. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how, how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. I've been hosting video podcasts every week, and still only one person has donated to our film project. Black people, I need you all to step up. I'm not doing this for my health. My film project is my last attempt to try to get my story on a big screen in order to reach the black masses and the black world to let them know who we are and what we're trying to do for the African-American community and the African immigrant community for credibility before we expand to Africa, Brazil, and the Caribbean. Work with me, work with me while I'm alive. Don't wait until I'm dead. In my Christian business, we're raising the bar in black America. We will separate ourselves from con artists Black Oule, degenerates, democratic shields, hardened criminals, pedophiles, off quote Negroes, and urban terrorists. Those who reject my vision and plan to help improve Black America will not be part of my Christian business because this will be membership based. We will pray for them, show them tough love, and keep it moving. The question at hand is, how long will it take for us to get this film project fully funded and made? My answer is up to the black grassroots and the global African family. I encourage non-black sympathizers to patronize our film project as well. But it's black Americans and African immigrants who are the CAM members responsibility to build it and to own it. The reason why many of you are not getting my notifications when we upload a new video podcast on YouTube is because I'm being shadow banned. Shadow ban is the process of blocking a content creator's videos or blog postings from social sites like Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, just to name a few. 
because someone who works for those companies may not um, like your point of view, whether the action is taken by an individual or an algorithm. This is why it's so important that Kirkham members would step up and get behind this film project so that the proceeds from the film would put me in a better position financially so that I can purchase property in Chicago, buy office equipment, and hire qualified black middle class professionals and African immigrants within the United States of America. Then we can build Grakai of Chicago, which is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Grakai of Chicago will serve both the African American community and the African immigrant community starting on the west side of Chicago and eventually expand to the south side of Chicago. Since I have little to no support for my cause, all I can do at this time is news and social commentary. If you're serious about learning more about me, then please purchase my revised book, quote, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, second edition. Read my story for yourself. If you agree with my vision and plan to help improve Black America, then make arrangements with me to come on this platform and let's talk about it and encourage others to join. Also, donate what you can towards our film project. I am reaching out to African immigrants within the United States of America to help me speed up the process from 10 African nations. They are as follows, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Uganda, Angolia, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Nigeria. All I ask is that you purchase my revised book, either the ebook or the paperback, and read my story for yourself. If you agree with my plans, then donate what you can to the film project and work with me on this platform to help um, get the word out. Um, Also share my information with your friends, Um, including your non-black friends. This will help speed up the process. Our aim is to raise 250,000. We are using crowdfunding such as GoFundMe so that everyone would know exactly where the money is going. Upcoming upcoming events. Our guest speakers for the month of July is as follows. Thursday, July 18th, we have three guest speakers. Mr. George Brooks, Mr. Jeremiah and Adelu, and Bishop Alex. Saturday, July 20th, we have Prophetess Marbeth Rose from Virginia. Please mark your calendar for the following date for our month monthly virtual conference, Facebook Live event, Saturday, July 27th, 2024. Theme, the Divine Nine, aka the Black Boule versus Burkham. Where? Facebook Live slash StreamYard. Time, 2 p.m. through 4 p.m. American Central Time, 3 p.m. Canadian Time, 8 p.m. West African Time, 9 p.m. South African Time, 10 p.m. East African Time, and 8 p.m. UK Time. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video presentation. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger and drop a link in the chat room to StreamYard Studio so that way you can interact with me in real time through Q&A. This is called Side B. The title of this presentation, The Attempted Assassination of Former President Donald Trump. Tonight we're talking about former President Donald Trump assassination attempt. Everybody's seen what happened. It's all over the news. We have a lot of people on the left coming up here with all kinds of conspiracy theories talking about it was staged. Listen, 
that was not staged. That was an assassination attempt point blank. This happened last week on Saturday, July 13th. He was at a rally at but Butler, Pennsylvania, as most people know, and he was doing his rally speech, and someone started shooting. The shooter was a 20-year-old white male named Thomas Matthew Crooks. He made videos, said how he hated Republicans and hated Trump, but the interesting thing that he did was um, give a donation to the Biden campaign during his inauguration. People usually don't donate money during that time. Eight months later, he registered at, as a Republican, and then he made a video about how much he hates Republicans and Trump. If you listen to reports, they said if former President Trump did not move his head um, a certain way, the bullet would have struck him in his um, back of in the back of his head. And we just thank God that that didn't take place. A couple of people actually died on the scene. The shooter was also put down, and someone in the uh, audience. Um, you know, they died um, in front of their loved ones trying to protect them from the uh, gunfire. I pray that that individual who lost his life rest in peace. The Secret Service solidified Trump getting away from the, the rally. He got shot in the ear, or nicked in the ear, and got up with blood on his uh, face. This incident will help galvanize his base. Also, the fact that they were, they were trying to uh, take him out is further solidifying his base because the Democrats tried to put charges on him. That didn't work. Now somebody tried to actually assassinate him. It looks like some people are desperate to get him out of, out of the way. I am just, I'm just saying. Trump took that bullet up there and gave a uh, rising fist, which is a symbol for black power and the black struggle. The Democratic Shields have been having a hissy fit trying to shame people by saying, we sound like we're a mega crowd. Once he's reelected, then he's going to close those borders. We've seen a lot of white liberals making videos saying such things as why didn't the bullet take him out or why the shooter missed its target. These white supremacist financial elites on the left are pissed off that Trump survived. There's a rumor taking, talking about it was a left-wing group who probably orchestrated a hit on Trump. That's what's the narrative is. So they're sitting Biden down for a minute because they know there might be some kind of retaliation. Unfortunately, white supremacist groups battle each other, and usually black Americans end up being the scapegoat. Look throughout American history. The dominant society always escaped us with certain things. If we're Want to fight for something, we need to fight for something that's specifically for black Americans like lineage based cash payment reparations for descendants of American slaves. It looks really bad for the Democrats right now. Trump has criticized many people in the corporate sector and he has criticized the media. A lot of these guys who do these kind of shootings usually are affiliate, affiliated with racist groups like 4chain, 8chain, all are part of the alt-right, which is identified as a hate group. For example, people like Darren Roof, 
Cal Rittenhouse and Peyton Jen Jenrun are just a few who shoot up other white people because that's who they're really mad at. They're mad at the white people in white society for not socially accepting them. They usually, they usually hang out on these 4chan websites. All they know are racist stereotypes, so a lot of the anger is with the dominant society. These are the people who rejected them in real life. Remember, Dalen Roof, best friend, was black. We have to be smart about racial politics in America. Trump is still out here stumping hard for his political campaign. He's showing strength. I pray that he has a speedy recovery. Trump hasn't done anything to black America collectively to harm us. On this platform, it's my hope that our black empowerment films will attract black youth to join us in order to help reduce or end street beefs among inner city youth starting in Chicago. It's not, I'm not on here playing games, nor am I here to entertain. I'm here to give a public announcement. I need like-minded black Americans, like-minded African immigrants, like-minded black millennials, and like-minded Generation Z to join my Christian virtual organization called the Grassroots Community Activist Movement. The best way to join first by purchasing my revised book and reading my story so that when you can understand what this is all about. In my business, there will be open rewards and there will also be open consequences. The CAM members will build the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago for credibility before I cut and run to Africa. I only want to hear from those of you who agree with the vision and in, um, you know, you're, you're in agreement and you're not about playing games and that you're serious. Also, again, donate what you can towards our film project. Um, Donkey Drama, which is based on my revised book. Again, I don't want to be doing this up for another 32 years. I want us to build Grakaio Chicago, which will serve both the African American community and the African immigrant community. I stand on business everywhere I go. There, there's been reports that everybody went through scanners and all of that they had snipers on the roof. There was an interview that was conducted by Global News. I encourage my listeners to please go to the comment section below this video podcast and look for my medium transcript. Click on it and scroll down to show and prove to watch the full video. I want you all to hear exactly what this man said about the shooter. According to the video, it said the shooter was climbing up on the roof. They had people saying he's going up there with a rifle. A police officer went up after him. The white supremacist financial elites got some nerve to say that black Americans are the most violent people in the United States. The shooter also had pipe bombs in his car and in his home. What brother you know run around with pipe bombs? Look at history. Whose community assassinated former President Abraham Lincoln? Historically, the Republicans wanted black Americans to have land after the end of American slavery. It was the Democrats who had anti-black racism um, against, against it. That's why we did not get our 40 acres and a mule. That's U.S. history, and um, you can find that information under uh, show and prove on my um, medium transcript. I know black Americans don't like talking about that. If they're trying to 
take this man's life, it must be a big deal. I am not going to fight a civil war for the comfort of other people. Black Americans have fought in every war and what happened after they returned to America. We get subjugated while all these other groups enjoy obtaining the American dream. If something ever goes down in America, I'm not fighting their war. I fight for black Americans, but I am still on first base and that's why I'm reaching out to African immigrants in America to work with me to get my film project fully funded and made so that I can be in a better position financially um, from the uh, film um, proceeds to hire qualified black middle class professionals and like-minded African immigrants in America to help me build Burkai of Chicago. Then we will expand Burkai to Africa, Brazil, and the Caribbean. This is my gift to my members who, who may not be able to leave the United States due to economics. Um, my, I want to encourage black parents who are able to leave to come with us and let's reclaim our ancestral homeland, which is Africa. Help improve the African economy and become dual citizens. In the United States of America, we fought for other groups. And what did we gain from that? Nothing. Our people was hung on trees in their military uniform coming back and being treated like fourth and fifth class citizens, oppressed at every stage. The battle is not for America, the battle is for Africa. If we lose Africa, we lose everything. Our ancestors built the United States of America. Now it's time that we reclaim our birthright and take our continent back from invaders. And yes, we can still fight for reparations in Africa because American companies are already there. And they owe us. Also, the European nations owe African reparations for colonization. We're leaving America due to your anti-black policies. America has lost her sense of morality. America has become a cesspool of wickedness unrighteousness and a den of demons. The sad thing is that a majority of black Americans are joining this mess. Black masculinity is under attack. American whoredom is propped, propped up in our society. Black Americans that are diehard Democrats prefer a political can candidate that said he won't um, integrate his children into a racial jungle. A candidate that instituted the 1994 crime bill that gave rise to the mass incarceration of black Americans. Yet, black Americans have hatred for the opposite candidate. Um, Trump didn't put any laws on the books to mass incarcerate black Americans. America looks real bad right now and on the global stage. Trump took real good and he looks like he's strong because he got shot and he's still doing his political campaign. Everybody's condemning political violence in America so America, you can change your image by paying reparations in the form of cash payments to descendants of American slaves, and that will change your image. But I'm, I'm pretty sure America don't want to do that. But they will eventually. They will. All of the principles in my revised book is the code for Gurkham members. We are declaring war on this 400-year slave mentality known as Willie Lynch in my film and in my future Christian business. I'm supposed to have 
um, a, at least a half a million subscribers, to be honest with you, on my YouTube uh, channel. But for some reason, YouTube um, is unsubscribing people off my channel. So I encourage those of you that are listening, please make sure that you subscribe. Because that's what I have to use right now until, uh, you know, I'm able to get this film project fully uh, funded and made. So this is, you know, this is where we're at. I encourage my listeners to speak with your favorite black podcasters who have a large audience. Um, encourage them to um, support our film project. Encourage them to um, come on this uh, platform and speak with me. We will stand on business. We've got to use every tool imaginable to get this film project popping. Many of these platforms are funded by corporate in entities. That's trying to gatekeep our message and rewrite our history. We're not letting that slide. A lot of black Americans are finally waking up and moving away from the Democrat Party. We have to make sure that we don't commit ourselves to one political party. We should be in, in the middle, independent voters, and vote for policies that best serve the African-American community. What have we been getting for voting Democrat for the past 60 years? I would say nothing. I don't advocate for us moving from one political party, Democrats to Republicans. Because I don't want Republicans to feel like they own the black vote. They have to offer some economic tangibles in the form of cash payments for descendants of American slaves, as well as an anti-black hate crime bill. We need to we need to be in the center ourselves as black independents and only vote for policies that will benefit our group. I wrote about Malcolm X in my revised book. He talked about democracy back in the day. He said, I am not American. That's how I feel. I am one of the 22 million black people who are the victims of Americanism. One of the victims of democracy is nothing but disguise hypocrisy. So I am not standing here speaking to you as a as an American or as a patriot or a flag saluter or a flag waver. No, not. I'm speaking as a victim of this American system and I see America through the eyes of the victims. I don't see any American dreams. I see an American nightmare. Unquote. That's Malcolm X. He said that back in 1964. And I have um, a video clip of that on my Medium page under Show and Proof, if you would like to watch it. Majority of black Americans are not aware, but the American dream is not real. It's a nightmare. And many Black Americans are starting to wake up. Democracy, as Malcolm X so eloquently stated, is nothing more but his, his, his hypocrisy. This democracy is not working for our best interest. There is so much corruption going on. We need, need to have more of these conversations among our people. In Africa, a lot of Businesses are owned by foreigners. For example, a majority of businesses are ran by Arabs, Asians, East Indians, and Europeans. This is not working for the best interest of African people. I'm trying to get my Christian business started in America first. Like I say, for credibility, then expand it to 10 African nations with the help of African immigrants here. It's going to take like-minded black Americans and like-minded African immigrants who are 
for camp members to come together and build their kind of Chicago and not rely on the government. Unfortunately, the system, the system is here to protect the interests of the white supremacist financial elites because they're the ones that created the system. We need to stop putting our trust in democracies that weren't created by us. We're relying on people who don't have our best interests at heart. Once we're established in America, then I plan on expanding the Kai of Chicago uh, to Africa, Brazil, and the Caribbean. Our democracy here in America is in shambles because it's not benefiting Black Americans as a collective group. Please leave a public comment about the topic in my in the comment section below and share with your friends on all social media sites you are on. This will help get the ball rolling. I'm going to send a challenge out to everybody that's listening to this video podcast. I need you all to support our film project so that we can move beyond cyberspace and get our story on the big screen to let the black world know who we are and what we're trying to do for our people who are trapped in American ghettos starting in Chicago. Quote, Hood Liberator made in Chicago, the war against Willie Lynch begins. You can be a part of this historic docudrama by contributing to our campaign either on our GoFundMe page or on our PayPal page, which will help fund marketing, promotion, clearancing, legal, and general expenses. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you on the next video podcast. Please join your cam by joining either my Christian groups, Light of the World Inspirational Group, or Christian Spoken Word Network, or join my secular groups, Gurkai of Chicago, or Gurkai of Africa, or New Black Voices of Media, etc. Also exchange emails with me so that we can stay connected because this is my third Facebook page. Hackers are forever bugging. Um, I would like to thank everyone who have contributed or will contribute to our to support us on our GoFundMe page. If you are a U.S. citizen, then you can use our PayPal page as a tax write-off because this is a legitimate. 501c3 nonprofit faith based community advocacy organization. You can also purchase items from our virtual store or purchase my revised book. The ebook is $9.99 or the paperback is $15 plus shipping and handling. We appreciate your support. You can find all of the links below this video podcast in the comment section. If you're listening to this audio podcast on Spotify, just click on the YouTube icon and look to the far right next to my photo and you will see all of the links. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button and see you on the next episode. This will conclude our video podcast. Peace and blessings. <laughs>